Hello friends, today we are going to see the decisions of soybean crop. In that, first we will see soybean mosaic. Fossil organism responsible for soybean mosaic is soybean mosaic virus. SMV occurs to all limited extent in all soybean producing areas. Here you can see the symptoms of this soybean mosaic virus. You can easily identify the infected plant by the symptoms of stunted growth, distorted and puckered leaves. The leaves are dwarfed, crinkled and narrow with their margin turned downward. In second image, you can see the severe infection of this soybean mosaic virus showing dark green blister like puckering along the vein. It is the particular marsh of identification for soybean mosaic virus. In seeds, seed discoloration is the common symptom occurs after infection by this soybean mosaic virus and the infected plants remain green even at the end of the growing season. So these are some basic symptomatological points. This virus is seed borne and is transmitted by aphid and favorable condition for development of this soybean mosaic virus is Temperature range around 18 to 20 degrees Celsius and humid weather. These are some predisposing factor which favors the development of this disease. Now, if you want to manage this disease or you, if you want to control this disease, you must have to apply the insecticide to control the insect vectors. In viral diseases, the insect vectors are responsible for spreading of viral diseases. So such insect factors like aphid, jaceus, white fly should be under economic threshold level. If they crosses the economic threshold level, you have to apply the insecticide, systemic insecticide for controlling this type of insect factors. For that you can use thymethoxam, dimethoid, methyl dimethon. These are some registered insecticides we can apply for controlling this soybean mosaic virus. Rhizoctonia seedling blight and root rot of soybean. This is a common disease occurs in all type of bean crops and its causal organism is Rhizoctonia solani. Now we will see the symptoms of this Rhizoctonia seedling blight. You can see in images there is the heavy rotting of roots as well as all the seedlings were died due to infection by this rhizoctonia blight. Both pre and post emergence damping off can cause due to this rhizoctonia seedling blight and infected seedlings have reddish brown lesions on the hypocotyl at the soil line. These lesions are sunken and remain firm and dry showing some dry root rot like symptoms. The root rot phase may persist into the late vegetative to early reproductive growth stages. Symptoms may disappear if infected plants grow out of the root rot problems, although plants may remain stunted. So in image you can see the detailed symptoms of this rhizoctonia blight showing the hypocotyl region and the blackish color lesions were developed near the ground level and on root surface. You can see the blackish color white uh, growth of this fungal pathogen. So we can easily identify this rhizoctonia blight. This rhizoctonia can survive on plant residues or in soil as in the form of sclerotia. Infection may occur soon after seed is planted, cool wet springs followed by hot dry conditions are favorable for development of this disease. And this disease is more severe on light and sandy soil and can be more common on the slopes of the field. Unfortunately, many strains of rhizoctonia can infect corn, alfalfa, dry beans and some cereal crops showing the infection of this rhizoctonia blight. 
management of rhizoctonia blight in soybean if you want to manage this disease then you must have to use disease free seed that means soybean seeds contaminated with sclerotia should not be used for sowing minimum 2 to 3 year of non host crops such as corn or small grains like wheat barley or oats similarly deep summer plowing is somewhat how controls the sclerotia which were present inside the soil and they will destroy due to the sun's heat similarly low moisture level within the soybean canopy are very critical for the reducing potential of sclerotium stem rot similarly we can also control this disease at primary level by seed treatment method with fungicide like thyrum zyrum or captain or pavestin at a rate of 2.5 to 3 g per kg of seed bacterial spot of soybean causal organism responsible for bacterial spot of soybean is pseudomonas syringi pathover glycine this is one of the most important bacterial disease and can be found in all over the soybean fields every year it caused by this bacterium pseudomonas syringi pathover glycine and the disease is most commonly occurs in wind swept thunderstorms in july and august the bacteria can also infect snap bean lima bean and other beans also the disease is sometimes confused with the brown spot that is septoria drip spot or the bacterial pustules both bacterial blight and the brown spot often occur in the same field even the same plant and the symptoms can be difficult to separate the primary symptoms of this bacterial drip spot shows dark water soaked lichens on younger leaves as the disease progresses yellow halo also produces around the each lichen so these are the particular marks of identification for identifying this bacterial leaf spot of soybean for management of this bacterial leaf spot of soybean we have to use antibiotics like streptocycline tetracycline or copper containing fungicide which were found effective against this bacterial blight pathogens now the most important disease of soybean is seed and seedling rot this seed and seedling rot causes heavy infection in three phases first is seed rot phase second is seedling mortality phase and third one is root and stem decay phase here you can see the symptoms of all these three phases the fungal pathogens involved in seed rot are pythium phytophthora and pomopsis the typical symptoms of this seed rot is soft decay of seed and missing seedlings in the row or the poor emergence these are some particular marks of identification of seed rot in soybean similar type of fungal pathogen we are involved in seedling mortality also showing the damping of like symptoms or seedling blight symptoms except rhizoctonia and fusarium where two extra pathogens we are involved in seedling mortality and typical symptoms of this seedling mortality are hypocotyl level that means hypocotyl may pinched and rotted due to the infection of this all four pathogens yellow and wilted leaves later turn brown leaf remains attached to the stem after the plant's death so these are some particular marks of identification for seedling mortality showing damping of or seedling blight symptoms and third phase is root and lower stem decay in root and lower stem decay the phytophthora rhizoctonia and sometimes fusarium may involve in this third phase so in this phase the typical symptoms are brown to reddish brown necrotic lichens on stem 
and on rotated roots. These are some particular marks of identification for root and stem decay. For management of such types of seedling blight, you must have to apply the seed treatment method that is seed treatment with thyrum or xyrum at the rate of 4 to 5 gram per kg of seed should be used to avoid the primary source of infection. Similarly, after emergence, if the disease arises, we can control it by using the systemic fungicides that is spraying with systemic fungicides like propiquinazole, hexaquinazole, then some other fungicides we are also effective like roco metalaxyl carbendazine should be should these are some recommended fungicide for this blight pathogen